So there's a couple of ways around this. Uh, the key way that we recommend um, with vehicles with smart alternator is that's why we've got this um, ignition input terminal here. What it actually does is allows the trigger point for the DC to DC to start up at a much lower level. Um, again, based on the smart alternators not outputting that high voltage uh, at all times. So a separate terminal there. The ideal way to wire that, especially if it is in a, uh, a four-wheel drive application or a motorhome or specialty vehicle application, is wire that directly off the ignition. That puts the unit into priority mode to allow it to actually start charging uh, at that lower voltage. Now, what else do you need to take into consideration if you've got a smart alternator? First off, I mentioned before that this negative should go straight to the uh, negative terminal on your starter battery. However, if you've got a smart alternator, it is to go to the actual chassis off your vehicle. Now again, we recommend running the cabling all the way forward to where the battery is, rather than trying to get um, full current running through your chassis to where you've got this mounted. Easiest way to see that is most smart alternator systems uh, have actually got a little shunt built onto their negative terminal. So what you want to do with that one is not go directly onto the terminal, but rather follow that cable down and see where it connects to the chassis. At that point where it connects to the chassis is where you want to make this connection. So again, that's more so for vehicles with smart alternator connections. A couple of other things you might see, um, especially caravan builders do this quite often, because running an ignition feed from the tow vehicle all the way through um, to this unit mounted in your caravan, for example, um, is a bit of a headache, um, especially when not all vehicles have got smart alternators today. So you may see some manufacturers actually put a little loop wire here. So what that does is essentially it is just triggering that priority mode. Now the downside of that is it will trigger priority mode as soon as you've plugged in your Anderson connection on your trailer. So what you need to keep in mind there is if you've parked up for maybe going to lunch for example and you've still got your trailer connected um, or you've actually just stored it out the front of your house overnight, this DC to DC will be charging or allowing the unit, your start battery to go to a much lower voltage than normal. So keep that in mind, be aware of how your particular system's installed. Now, um, I do know a lot of motorhome and um, a lot of auto electricians. The way they um, overcome that as another option is, yes, they'll just do a jumper wire here at the caravan, for example, but then what they'll do actually up at your start battery end here is they'll install a highly rated um, 100 amp minimum, for example, normally the ones we recommend and sell is 150 amp rated relay and they'll actually wire that um, relay from the ignition. Therefore, all the wiring's done up underneath the bonnet. So ignition triggered relay that will only energize your Anderson plug at the back of your tow vehicle and therefore through and put this into priority mode only when ignition's on. So there's a couple of different ways you can do the wiring there. Um, again, that's all outlaid in the manual um, with some diagrams there as well. Now, lastly, when I just touched on that relay um, and this is actually an installation I've got in my own personal vehicle because I've got a DC to DC behind my rear seat as well as my tow, um, my trailer also has a, uh, a DC to DC in it. So question is can I run more than one DC to DC off a, uh, a single starter battery? The answer is yes to that, you certainly can. Um, many, many people do it nowadays with big canopy systems as well as uh, a caravan being towed for example. So yes you can do it. Um, a couple of considerations there is beware what your alternator rating is. Um, you don't want to overload your alternator. Um, again, the great benefit of the Enerdrive units is you can actually ramp down um, that charge current. So therefore, not overloading your alternator, for example. Uh, another key one to remember is if both batteries are flat, for example, um, in your caravan as well as in the back of your canopy, the two units will be drawing quite considerable power uh, and because they only sense every three minutes there's a chance that when you shut off your ignition that that high current will actually drop your start battery down a fair amount. So our recommendations is if you've got a DC to DC in your tow vehicle, in your four wheel drive for example, as well as a, uh, another one in your caravan camper trailer, that you install the um, same thing, one of those heavy duty rated ignition relays. So therefore again the units only power up when the ignition is on. Um, that just, again, prevents your start battery from going flat there. Um, it's also a nice little feature as well. 
it stops your Anderson plug on the back of your uh, tow vehicle having power on it at all times, that there will only be power um, when your ignition's on there.